Today I want to take a look at Angular 1 and how to save to a SharePoint Online list. Here we're looking at a simple Angular 1 to-do application running in localhost. I've got Visual Studio Code open and I'm running the website out of LightServer. It's a very simple, easy to use local HTTP server. You type in light-server, hit enter. It opens a website on port 3000 which we can look at in our browser. I am running Chrome with cores disabled and that's why we have this security warning across the top and I get that out of uh, another blog post which I'll reference in the note but you can run Chrome with the cores functionality disabled. So now that we have our Angular 1 application running and I can add new items to the list what I'd like to do is find a way to save this to SharePoint because right now when you reload the page the data disappears. It would be great to have a way of persisting data. So here I have a save button which just writes the word save to the console. If I go look at my application we have a save function with console log save. So to get this all connected what we're going to do is open up SharePoint PMPJS. There's the PMPJS core project. There's a couple of different parts to it. What I really want to do is find a CDN for this. Here we go, cdnjs.com. We'll do the minified version, go to index.html, and put a script tag in the header. So now we have PMP added to the page. We want to go over here to another browser where we're logged in to SharePoint Online. And in the console, if I do SP page context info, in there I've got web absolute URL. That's going to be the name of the Office 365 web where we're trying to save data. In my local project, we don't have any context variable because it's not actually SharePoint. So for that, we're going to do window.spPageContextInfo equals, open up a new variable, put this down, save that, kind of say if one thing's not equal to the other. And we'll just say if the window does not have page context info, then we can put down a value. We want to match it identically. There we go. Okay, cool. And this will be our local dev context. Gives us a way to express what SharePoint site we want to work on so that when PMP initializes, it will see this and be able to use it. Now notice that PMP is loaded later in the sequence, so this variable is already going to be in the global namespace when that comes up. So down here, I want to put our PMP save function. Okay, that's fine. Here we have a lot of different documentation, and we can go into the developer guide, working with list items. We find an example of how to add an item to a list. Go ahead and put that in here. And it's actually going to be dollar PMP. Uh, this other example is TypeScript. So now if we reload and check out the console, I should be able to do underscore page context info and see my tenant URL that we want to save to and do dollar PMP and get a value back because that's now loaded as well. And both of those things available, we want to go ahead and clean this up a bit, get rid of the typing, no more arrow functions, we'll make that kind of a more traditional JavaScript function. Here we go with learn is the name of the list, title and description. I actually made a field and I named it JSON. So that field name's a little different. Otherwise this looks like a legitimate ad call. So we have our code written. Now from an authentication standpoint, our logged in SharePoint online browser, different session, I loaded a Chrome extension called Edit This Cookie, and it shows you all of your cookies. We have two important ones, Fed Auth and RTFA. If we go ahead and export those, we can come over here, go to Edit This Cookie, and do an import, paste in all that JSON, and click check mark. Good. And on my local host AngularJS project, I'm also going to put an origin header to the name of the tenant, and that will be on all outbound traffic. So mod header is one Chrome extension you'll need. 
and the others edit this cookie. The reason we're putting these things together is so that we have the authentication necessary to make a successful call. I can run an HTTP GET or POST and it will fail with a 401 or a 403 because I'm not logged in. But in my second session over here, I've already successfully logged in. I do have a valid token and I can export all of those cookies to take them to my development session. And the header, the origin header, that's necessary for some of SharePoint's APIs. By default, the origin is going to be localhost because we're running off localhost 3000. If SharePoint sees it giving me an origin of localhost, it will fail the API call in some scenarios. So here we're sort of faking the origin as a way of making the API call successful. Now ultimately you'll take this whole project and it's not going to run on localhost 3000 anymore with these extra cookies. You'll end up loading it into SharePoint Online with either SPFX or a content editor or some way introducing that JavaScript to SharePoint Online and it'll execute where it already has a page context info. It already has the cookies and the origin does in fact match. So some of this is necessary for development. Now the good news of playing with these things in your, your Chrome browser with the extensions is that we don't have to put them in our code. Our code is beautiful, streamlined, and simple. All it does is say $PMP web list, so opening up a list called learn and adding an item with these values. That's an extremely simple API call. In the development context, we'll add if missing. So if we don't have one, put one down. And that way the plugin can initialize with the correct destination in mind. So with all that said, let's go over here and go ahead and add a few items to our list. We'll click Save. And we got back a data object. That looks promising. OK, there's an ID number. Cool come over here to our SharePoint Online session, I see one new item added with title and JSON. Excellent! That was a successful API call. Um, and again, with just minimal amount of coding, leveraging the reuse of the, those cookies. So what we're going to do next here is make a variable called JSON body, and it will be json.stringify vm.todos. There we go. And instead of the word JSON, we'll do JSON body. We'll go ahead and save that. Reload. Yep. And here we have some more items to add. Click the save button. We do get an object returned. There is an ID number of seven. Over here I see a new item on my list. And what do we have in the JSON field? but actual JSON representing the to-do list. So this is a really cool way that you can use SharePoint Online making API calls. You know, in this example, we're adding an item to a list. Not a huge deal, but of course you can do updates, deletes, the user profile service, search, document check-in and check-out, workflow execution, you name it. All of the REST APIs that SharePoint has available become successful running off of a local host as soon as you do edit this cookie and load the authentication in the background. I would strongly suggest doing the mod header to match origin. Not all the APIs care about this, uh, but some of them do. I just think it's a good practice to go ahead and do both. Edit this cookie, mod header, and now you can write your JavaScript code nice and simple and it will go through just as if it were hosted on SharePoint Online, but you get that productivity of running in localhost where you're working on your project, you come in here, you make a modification, the second you hit Control S to save, it's reloading in the background. I mean, that, that's the developer experience we want to have, where you can work your application, rapid iterations, doing the code back and forth, light server, browser sync, but from a SharePoint perspective, we need to have our cookies for authentication so we can make those API calls successfully. Thanks for watching.